A daily bearish engulfing has printed and our bottom side target was met and overshot. The closure of this bearish formation is shining some light on a price range that has been used for some parabolic runs in the past. A critical support has been broken and we may have further confirmation of a chop box. Welcome back to the channel on this Wednesday. This is Arcut. Let's dive into ticker symbol FNGR. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive in to ticker symbol FNGR for this very, very red day. And uh, what I will what I will say is, is that uh, remember yesterday we were speculating on a potential of having some correlation or the inverse correlation of the uh, ticker symbol SPY, which is our S&P 500 ETF versus the asset FNGR. So please notice here that the SPY ticker absolutely ripped to the upside even further right so let me wow is, i know there's a a uh, lot of things going on right here right so let's just uh kind of look at this right so uh ta -ta 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 -ta. Oof, i'm wondering if this shock here on the bi-hourly time frame th this uh shooting star ended up being this price action right down here where we got this where we got this huge capitulation immediate downside and recovery so i'm wondering if that is the correlation between fngr and spy now uh what i am noticing here is that spy is essentially facing some weakness and uh <clears throat> i mean this is just I want to be i don't know if i'm i don't know if i'm being if i'm trying to force the bear case here I don't know if I'm trying to force it, but I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I just feel like this is, uh, this doesn't look so good, right? I mean, we're testing, we're testing that SMA 10. The SMA 10 is clearly not in, on this upside anymore. I think this is getting ready for a breather and I, and just, uh, these could be one of the first signs of it, right? So, um, don't take my word for it, right? Uh, in fact, today I actually got, a, I, I actually stopped out on my uh, trade to the downside we were green for a little bit but then it ended up reversing all the way to the upside again so um uh yeah so i mean this candle here the six hour candle closing let me get rid of the moving averages uh just like this yeah this six hour candle here closing beneath the regression top would suggest actually a bearish case here and the uh, formation of the candle itself too, a shooting star, right? So um, I can't say officially that uh, FNGR is done with a downside. In fact, I do, well, I mean, this is, the, we were saying the 472 based on this uh, uh, head and shoulders, right? So we did, I was speculating yesterday that I'm not sure if we can reach it, but we have to, you know, we have to play the cards like that. We have to make sure to put that target there, even though, right, based on this formation itself. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so now what I'm saying here is, is that there is potential for a further downside and I can validate it with a few things. Okay. First of all, the hourly time frame. this is where I usually trade, right? Uh, hourly time frame, linear regret, uh, linear regression channel. This is a very clean resistance of the mid band and closure of this candle here. It's a, I mean, this is, this is also clearly a very, uh, uh nice print of a gravestone doji. And uh, this is suggesting a downside, right? So the downside phase from here, at least if we were look if we were looking at this on the next hourly candle, would shine light uh, at four at four sixty three. But if we come back down to maybe let's just say at uh, market open tomorrow, right? I would say right about here. In the in the within the first hour of the market open, or within the first hour and a half. You're looking at a bottom side of around 455, right? And then uh, into the second, into the second and third hour, you're looking at around 452, 453. Okay, so those targets are they're not uh, they're not random. Okay, we'll get to that right now. Remember those 450 targets. Okay, here is the uh, hourly time frame RSI about to reach resistance on the SMA 14. So the simple the 14 day simple moving average represented by the pink line here on the RSI 
is located in in the uh, bear weakness percentile and specifically in its gravitational zone. So that means that the RSI signal represented by this teal line can move up, which is representing price action, by the way, right? So it can move up and resist at that SMA 14 alongside the gravitational zone and push price to a further downside. As you can see here, we broke beneath this SMA 14 and we have never come back to validate its support. It doesn't mean that we're going to have to. I'm just saying that it's typical for us to validate supports uh, or, or, or closures or breaks of supports and resistances and or resistances. Okay, so let's move on to the next chart and display here the relevance of the 450 targets. So this bottom side here, aka Capibara, 451 bottom. Now, the move that we did from there, was, I mean, it was huge, right? We, we made a 453 to 725 ripper. I mean, it did take a, it did take a couple of weeks, but it, it did happen. Now, pulling back right back over here to August 28th of this year, perfect 451 open, actually the low of 452. If you observe here on the OHLC, the low value right there, 452. This ran from 452 all the way up to uh, 797, right? So we have a couple, we have a couple rejections here too, right? Drop into this area, then lift off, and uh, we eventually touched 509 from 450, uh, 451. Let me see this one. This was uh, 450. Uh, same situation here. Opening of this candle is at 450. Went from 450 to about six dollars and 18 cents. So I mean I mean yeah there there's a there are some prayer, there are some parabolic bounces that have happened from this point here. Um I will say however that if we start closing uh I would say a small uh small maybe 4 hour closures so small closures uh I wouldn't yeah I think I would have to do it with maybe a 4 hour. So if we start seeing 4 hour closures beneath that 451 uh, I mean, we would start uh, introducing the potentials of uh, 397 into 384. Okay, so, but this is a critical support that we have to take a look at. Another thing that we should observe is the very clear declining of volume. Okay, so if we're noticing volume from this point here, which is this candle here, this huge downside is actually starting to lose steam. Okay, so, I mean, don't... Uh, don't doubt it for a single second here. Of course, we can still face some further downside. Uh, and now the other metric to give you, I'm sorry, the other two uh, confirmations of uh, a, a next uh, support would be this. Well, simply breaking the uh, regression here, right? In the, that regression, you can see that we've been respecting it for quite some time, right? So breaking this regression already introduces the potential of uh of getting in touch with the next inflection zone so now but uh but before this i'm sorry there's three there's three confirmation there's three confirmations sorry the breaking of the swing low so this here was the bounce at uh 481 we got this top side about of about 613 and then we started bouncing off of that bottom side again now breaking this swing low is already giving us the you know confirmation for a further downside next and last thing here is a bearish engulfing. So this bearish engulfing candle, I usually like to see this formation on the top side, <clears throat> right? But in this case, sure, it's being printed in the bottom side. I still can't ignore the fact that it's, uh, you know, green candle back here with a, with a red candle engulfing it entirely, right? So this, honestly, uh, I guess if we look at it as price action came down here, then it went up. Then it came down. I guess we can still sort of validate this as a bearish engulfing. Okay, so all of those things are indicating a potential downside. Now, the downside here on a bearish engulfing candle formation does not have a price objective. It's just to signal that there is further downside to be looked at. Um, in a regular in a regular trade situation, without observing formations, this is a clear break of the prior bar low. Right, so this prior bar came down to 485. This current bar broke beneath that and closed beneath that. So that's already a clear signal, right? So, and this is why I'm thinking that on my thesis here, we can, we can, uh, with, 
I don't want to say certainty whatsoever, but with high probability, 451 could be one of those targets for us to observe. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the next chart here as I do have to share with you the manipulation, right? So today we ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, and six strikes of manip manipulation, all of which happened during this downside, right? Price action essentially came down from 493 all the way down to 461 using, uh, using some sort of manipulation, right? So uh, now let's move on here and move on to the next chart and see what we have. Okay, so now that we're noticing here that we have some type of buy signal, I, I, can't, I can't trust this because I'm still working on this, uh, on, on the thesis behind this, right? But we had already pointed out, we had already pointed out before that we had some supports at the bottom side here, a 455 to 443. And I think we may have mentioned them yesterday. Okay, so um, what I can do is, adjust the uh, standard deviation look back or the multiplier here to a factor of three and see if we have anything there. Okay, so th this, you know, <laughs> this feels more like it, right? So if we do have an upside, we will speculate on that and we will figure out why we would even have an upside, right? So uh, let's take a look. You know what? Yeah, we, we, we can probably figure out this upside further to, into a further downside using the RSI. Just a moment. I mean, it, it may it may work. Okay, so let's go to the immediate short term. Let's go to the five minute time frame. Okay, five minute, ten minute, and fifteen are displaying a downside with a support at the SMA fourteen relative to the distance. Right, same situation here with even the thirty minute. Uh, but as we jump in, let me see the hourly. That is very, very confusing. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the price action here and see why we would face a downside first. So, I mean, that's honestly what, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I say, uh, were all these small, uh, okay. Yeah. Downside. Okay. So yeah, let's bring, uh, let's bring this back here and see where we can, uh, where we can resist from and support from. Okay, so I, I mean, I have to give that 451, that 450 to 452. I have to give it its credit. I, I really do feel like there could be some type of a bounce there. Let's, uh, let's go back to the RSI and continue speculating here. So now moving on to the buy hourly time frame. This resistance, sure, it's there but it's also located in the gravitational zone of the bear strength, meaning that we can, I mean, we have a shot here of, of succeeding the upside of the SMA 14 if we are in that gravitational pull. I will say, though, that a lot of time frames are pivoted towards the downside here, and also, please, please, please notice down here on the, on the monthly time frame and the bi-monthly that it's getting ever, I mean, it's getting closer. Right, so this compared to yesterday's analysis, definitely closer. So, and and this is the uh, the uh, th this is the threat of hopium that I uh, expressed a few days ago, and I touched on it yesterday too. So everything else is leading towards the downside, but I can see the support coming up on the monthly time frame, which means that this downside to four fifty, sure, it, it's definitely possible. Now, but please remember that I have an overall range, right? So the focus is 451. Let's go ahead and just put it in there. Just like this. Right? So focus is for sure 50, uh, 451, right? But know that the overall range is 455 to 443 with a focus of 451, okay? So make sure, and please make sure, and it also just happens to be the very bottom side of a three standard deviation multiplier uh, volatility band, AKA Bollinger bands. Okay. So, uh, yeah, team, please, 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 please watch out with the price action as I do see a further downside coming in, but I also see some weakness on this downside too. Okay. I'm also noticing that there is a clear decline in volume here. And that usually signals that there is uh weakness to the current trend. Okay. So, uh, we will take a look at this live tomorrow as well.
Okay, team, so you know the risks, you know the upsides, the downsides, and the potential upsides. Let's go ahead and uh, practice our discretion from here. Please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well and a very, very good rest of your night. And I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios, team.